Welcome back. In the last class, we looked at uh, haptic interfaces, specifically we focused on the kinesthetic displays. Uh, in today's class, we look at the, the tactile displays, the other classification of the haptic devices known as the tactile devices. Again, to remind you, we are talking about uh, uh, the human haptics. The first half of the course, we focused on the human haptics. Now, we are trying to mimic the human haptics in the machine. You can consider uh, human haptics as a science part of the haptics, whereas the machine haptics, which is uh, which can be considered as a technology part of the haptics. So, how do we convert our understanding of the human haptics into engineering and uh, uh, machines, which will help us to uh, improve the perception of virtual reality or uh, no, rehab. There are many applications which we are going to see later, but right now how do we convert our understanding of the our human haptics into machine is what our focus. In the last class, we looked at the, the different kind of the grasps and specifically the, the contact grasp, precision grasps and power grasps and we are supposed to come up with uh, yeah, the interface which will help us to have this many different type of the grasps. Of course, it may not be possible to develop one single interface which will help us to do all the grasps probably now uh, as many as grasps possible or individually now uh, come up with uh, 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 devices that will provide individual grasp. Okay. And uh, in the last class, we also saw uh, uh, the kinesthetic displays and the uh, 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 tactile displays. Specifically, we saw A kinesthetic displays as uh, mostly grounded uh, the kinesthetic display, where uh, the device, it is a advanced robotic device, where the finger trip or you are holding a pen like device is, which is the end effector of an advanced robo. And uh, the forces it is resisting your motion of the finger is actually transmitted back to the, the, the ground this is called the grounded displays. Example is the phantom we saw so many other devices in the earlier class. So, essentially you can see that the, the device base is grounded, it has serial uh, 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 linkages which is connected to the fingertip or the fingers or the palm which will resist your motion that is the usual uh, uh, kinesthetic display. In the next two classification of the devices, it is the exoskeleton where the grounding is at the wrist and again the wrist it has a serial uh, connections to the fingertip, the finger movement is again wristed, uh, 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 um, uh, resisted and the resistive motion is transmitted back to the wrist or somewhere over here, right. There are a couple of uh, uh, gloves we have seen where this could be the forces, reactive forces are transmitted to the, the palm or somewhere in the body. This are all called the you know, bodily owned gra uh, haptic devices. So, some devices transmit the forces on the shoulder or the hip, somewhere it has to transmit the force. So, what we are feeling is the, the force but there is an equivalent opposite force which has to be transmitted either back to the desk, desktop uh, sorry ground or, or somewhere on the body. Okay. So, in this case it is a wrist or any other uh, places. Now, the other type of device can be the fingertip device. At the fingertip we do not have to transmit the device uh, forces to anywhere else. At this device is it can give you um, many uh, uh, tactile uh, feedback. So, this where there is uh, the, the ground based haptics or exoskeleton where kinesthetic is involved and a fingertip alone if you take it, uh, it is mostly tactile not kinesthetic at all. 
right. Uh, uh, so, the technologies needed for kinesthetic devices or fingertip devices is very different from the technology needed for exoskeleton or the grounded displays. Okay. So, we will focus on the fingertip displays today and then a little bit on the, the, the body displays, motion displays or our focus is to develop this devices as that can be useful in virtual reality. You put on your goggles HMD, uh, you want to touch certain objects in the virtual reality and we want to get a you know, force feedback. Okay. A combination of this grounded displays or the exoskeletons and the fingertip display is what we, is going to help and uh, today we will focus on only on the fingertip displays. Okay. The fingertip displays essentially now uh, called the tactile displays is uh, again there are many varieties of displays. As a part of this course project some of you can attempt to do you know, a few of the devices. Uh, these devices are very, very simple devices. Okay. Usually tactile device means and uh, it is uh, referred as uh, yeah, an array of uh, pins. Okay. In array of pins which will move up and down where you can feel uh, uh, the forces when you keep the finger or the palm over there, the pins can go up and down and then you can feel the surfaces. And uh, as of now probably about uh, you know 200 by 200 has been and uh, 200 pins and 200 pins have been fabricated using the MEMS technologies. Uh, but uh, maybe what we need is uh, 400 by 400 uh, depending upon the, the density of the fingertips. Uh, we, we looked at lot of uh, mechanoreceptors. So, the finger uh, the density of mechanoreceptors as, uh, 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 would require 400 by 400 pins uh, 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 in the palm area alone which is probably another 5 years or t 10 years uh, down the line. Okay. Uh, this is uh, uh, pin based pin uh, tactile array we call it as a tactile array and uh, each one each pin is, uh, is called the uh, taxel just like pixel in the display we can call this as a taxel which either switches on or switches off either on or, or uh, increases the height or decreases the height. Other than this tactile array hey, uh, there are many other devices is what we are going to uh, focus about. Okay. The first device is the contact and pressure display where we are talking C contact is the very basic uh, uh, the grasping uh, uh, task we talked about right. So, in the contact it is a may be the simplest one we can say this is the simplest one simplest of all the uh, that uh, contact task or the you know, grasping task where the fingertip has to be you know applied with certain normal force that is all yeah that is where uh, now we are looking at the you know contact maybe a very simple you know solenoid or a voice coil or one degree of freedom actuator can be used to give you the, the contact. Okay. Maybe you can give a very small you know, uh, uh, finger uh, gloves where there is only one degree of freedom movement of uh, this actuator which will either contact or not contact either contact or contact disconnect. So, that will give you the, uh, the sense of contact in a virtual reality if there are menus over there when you contact the menu you want to give a feeling of you know, very simple contact even though the menus are virtual there are no displays there are no real displays they are all virtual displays but still when you touch it touch the menu button you should uh, give a feeling of uh, you are touching the menu by actuating this one degree of freedom actuated that is the simplest uh, now, uh, contact uh, pressure uh, display. Uh, it is very similar to probably you know, something like this a yeah, very small you know, devices can be mounted on the finger or, uh, 
and uh, can be given a contact feedback. Okay. Now, uh, uh, the second uh, device uh, could be you know, curvature display. Okay. Curvature dip display, suppose if you have a object whose uh, no, uh, curvature radius is bigger than the, the fingertip itself, then what you do is let us say this is your fingertip, you are contacting it and you are moving this, uh, you are moving this uh, finger over the display. Uh, there are two things happening. One is that you are, uh, you are, uh, uh, your kinesthetic system comes into picture. You are feeling that uh, you are moving over here, and there is also contact. Okay, contact. Basically, we are talking about the cutaneous uh, system, uh, tactile system. So, what is the role of tactile system in the perception of the curvature? We want to display the curvature information of a virtual object. Okay. So, uh, uh, how is it going to be? Suppose again, it is based on the you know, psychophysical research. Uh, uh, the research shows that suppose if we have a very flat surface and if you want to give a perception of uh, curvature, uh, there are two ways of doing it. One way is that you have this surface normal and then rotate the surface normal, so that you have this sense of curvature. Okay. Or what you do is you change the height of the surface normal without rotation. Let us say this is a smoothly over here, this is also. This is the two ways of doing it. What researchers have found out psychophysical again study is that this gives you a much more feeling of perception of curvature than this. Okay. So, uh, not just by altering the height of the, uh, the pins like just like the tactile arrays do, but just by rotating the surface normal it is very important in order to give you the, the curvature or, uh, uh, information. Okay. So, uh, again you can come up with a very simple way of rotating the surface normals. How are you going to rotate the surface normals? We will see it. Okay. So, a simple finger mount which will rotate the sur uh, which will rotate the surface normal as you move over the thing or the over the virtual objects that will give you the perception of curvature without the real objects over there. Okay. And then the third one is the uh, the vibration and texture and material. Of course, vibration we all know that is again a very simple uh, form of uh, feedback, but in order to feel the texture and materials. Okay. So, uh, uh, how are we going to use this vibration? Vibration can be useful in order to feel the texture. Okay. Suppose, if we have vibration not just as a no, uh, vibration we know we have this amplitude as well as the frequency which we can modify it. Suppose, if we modify the vibration frequency according to the, uh, the position of the uh, according to the position, let us say the we, we move our finger on a surface is uh, at different velocity, let us say we have uh, velocities increasing and uh, the vibration frequency vibration frequency let us say yes uh, velocity and uh, vibration frequency velocity of uh, finger movements let us say and according to the vel uh, velocity we are increasing the uh, frequency it is not the constant. So, by modulating the frequency we can uh, according to the you know, velocity of the movement, we can uh, somehow generate the texture feeling. It is not the constant frequency of the vibration, depending upon velocity you change the frequency of the vibration that gives you the feeling of texture. 
okay. that is one way of uh, looking at it. Of course, texture when you look at it, it is a very complex uh, uh, multidimensional phenomena. Uh, if you look at uh, texture, what do we mean by texture? So, at least I can say there are three dimensions to the texture. Let us find out the two dimensions and then let us uh, talk about the other dimensions. So, texture it can be either rough or smooth, right. It can be you know uh, soft or hard, it can be wet or, or uh, dry, it can be it can be uh, what um, uh, sticky or uh, or uh, uh, slippy slippery there are many dimensions of uh, talking about uh, some uh, many researchers have come up with uh, many more dimensions but mainly softness or hardness or, or uh, no, roughness or uh, smoothness these are the main so, these are the main dimensions, two dimension at least. Okay. So, this texture generating the perception, giving the perception of this texture in the virtual reality is a very challenging task. Okay. So, one way is to modulate the frequency, some way. Here, uh, in one researchers, they have modulated the fr uh, frequency of the vibration depending upon the velocity. Yes, sir. What does that simulate? dimension does it simulate? Uh, uh, it is actually no smooth or rough right. So, there is only one dimension they, they have simulated, there are other dimensions also which we are going to see right. Okay. And uh, we can also talk about yeah. So, another uh, the next display is the softness or hardness. Again, so all these tactile devices, if you look at it, there is no kinesthetic in, uh, information at all, no kinesthetic information. It is completely cutaneous or tactile, right? Cutaneous. How, just with cutaneous information, how can we give the softness or hardness? This should be hardness, right? That is a challenge. Can you imagine how? softness can be simulated just with uh, hardness, so just with the you know, cutaneous information. If you look at the softness or hardness, we have this penetration depth, penetration depth, right. Uh, depth. So, suppose if there is a spring, we press it and then we know how much depth we have uh, compressed it but that is a kinesthetic information. Our challenge is to display the softness without this kinesthetic information is. Okay. So, this penetration depth uh, uh, may be related to the, the contact area of the finger. Okay. So, when you are compressing it, more forces you are applying. So, the more contact area in your fingertip, right. So, or uh, uh, th that in turn relates to the skin deformation. Okay. So, somehow if you can change the contact area of the finger, then probably you now softness can be you now simulated without the kinesthetic information. Okay, that is a challenge. So, how are we going to change the contact area of the uh, finger? Again, we, we are going to talk about it. Friction display. In the friction display, again, uh, we know friction is a very, very complex um, phenomena. Simple skin stretch. For example, maybe of a 0.25 mm will give you the you know uh, perception of the friction it is friction perception. Okay. 
Okay. If you look at the finger pad, what is its friction coefficient? Okay. There are friction forces we need to simulate it. Okay. So, the friction it, this is very highly uh, nonlinear. For example, uh, 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 in the dry state, the friction coefficient of the uh, or the finger pad is uh, now behaving like an elastic material. In the wet state, the finger pad it de behaves like a plastic material. Okay, uh, because uh, how how the it is neither or 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 the wetness condition of the finger depends upon how much sweat you have. Right? There are sweat glands in your uh, uh, fingertip or throughout the, the skin. So, if you are emotional, then more sweat glands are now generating sweat that changes the, the friction coefficient, the behavior of the, the finger pad itself, and that in turn affects your per perception of, of uh, different objects. So, the uh, suppose if we can uh, measure the friction coefficient, coefficient of uh, the finger pad that is not only just a function of uh, dry or wet condition, but also the, the sliding velocity. So, uh, all the studies have, uh, have been done and uh, uh, in the haptics literature very well, but our aim is to uh, how do we make the friction perception in the virtual reality without the kinesthetic information just using the, the uh, cutaneous devices, tactile devices. One way is to do the skin stretch under your fingertip by appropriately changing the screen stretch we can give you a perception of friction. So, coming up with a device, one degree of freedom device, which will give you the skin stretch is going to be you now very useful. The, uh, it, it can give you for example, very uh, 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 area where you can uh, stretch slightly and under the fingertip that can give you the uh, not only the friction, we also talk about the the, the softness and uh, we are also going to talk about the indentation in the, in the, in the next slide. So, it has a lot of applications probably some of you can and uh, think about developing a skin stretch display, it is not just a vibration. So, we are talking about the tangential motion, tangential motion not all in one direction, it is actually a, no, in a radial direction. Okay. These are all very simple, simple devices but the applications could be you know, lot. And then we are talking about the, uh, the indentation, okay. indentation. So, we have a small bump and we want to find out, uh, we want to find out, uh, we want to display this in the virtual reality. Without the real bump, we want to give the feeling of uh, uh, a real, uh, real bump. Right. So, when you move your fingertip over a real pump, what is happening is there are two things happening. Tension which has a lateral force, lateral force as well as the, the uh, normal force, normal force in a, a cutaneous device we cannot give the normal force. Without the normal force let us see how to use the lateral force alone to give the skin indentation that is a challenge. Okay. So, uh, uh, this can be easily demonstrated if anyone of you have a comb, do you have a comb? Okay. Uh, when you go back to your uh, hostel you can do this experiment, if you hold this one okay, and then slightly disturb the teeth here you can feel the bumps in the fingertip. Okay. So, uh, this teeth is not moving up and down. Okay. Without moving up and down only by laterally moving it you get the feeling of bumps indentation. Okay. This is an illusion, 
but this illusion can be useful to develop a display, virtual display. So, one of you can think about uh, now how to make this uh, display, okay. So, one of you can try it out and then see whether that is true. Can you try it out? Yes. Or you, you yourself can try it out? Yes. Check whether that is true. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the next uh, one is going to be push button. Oops. So, push button again, I, the challenge is that when you are pushing the button, there is a movement of the fingertip. Without the movement of the fingertip, can we give the feeling of pushing the button? That is a challenge. Push buttons. Again, push buttons means you can see that the contact area is actually increasing. Contact area, skin stretch is there, and stretch is there, and then this is going to be the normal force, finger displacement, yes, finger displacement, displacement. So, just by stretching the skin, you get an illusion of uh, you know, uh, increasing your contact area and because contact area is related to the finger movement, we get the feeling of moving the finger and really, uh, really pushing the buttons. Now, you can go back and see how Microsoft or uh, Apple has, has uh, developed this uh, latest uh, Apple phone in giving the feeling of pushing the button on the phones, okay. Without the, you know, actually giving the pushing it, how did they give you the feeling of uh, the push buttons? It will be a very nice homework. I hope you will enjoy it, okay. The face geometry again and the combination of uh, all these things, uh, uh, stretching the skin and uh, no, modifying the surface normals rotating the surface normals can give you the, the surface uh, geometry. Now, uh, this we have already seen it. These are the few of the devices which uh, for giving the indentation. Okay. Remember the, the comb experiment illusion we talked about, there are already devices which give you the feeling of a bump of, of using the comb illusions and uh, these are the you know, references as you can take a look at it. And these are the devices that gives you the lateral stretch, very simple devices, okay. It is all 3D printed, only one actuator, but only thing is you need to come up with a very simple mechanism to give you the lateral stretches, okay. Um, uh, again, we uh, uh, it is a challenge to give you the kinesthetic, perception of kinesthetic stimuli but using the cutaneous stimuli alone. Okay. You should feel the kinesthetic stimuli, but are using the cutaneous. Okay. Again, lateral stretch and then tangential motion can give you the feeling of the kinesthetic stimuli. Again, there are devices over there. In a recently, I think just uh, six months back, there are a lot of startup companies who have made product, very successful product as far as the virtual reality is concerned, that will give you haptics feedback in a virtual reality controller the virtual reality controller, you have this controller in your hand, it is not just giving the vibration feedback, but is much more that and vibration feedback using some of the terminologies or te technologies we talked about. For example, Striker VR is one of the successful startup company. It gives you the recoil of a gun, okay. They give you the library of uh, no, uh, designing your gun, how much recoil should be there and all those things. Very simple device such as this one. You take it, it is all, uh, uh, you put it in your own device, okay, any device and uh, it is wirelessly connected and uh, you design your uh, recoil and you get a perception. This is one of the successful. So, how again, uh, what is the technology behind this uh, uh, device? You can uh, probe into it, a very simple uh, uh, solenoid, okay. uh, 
check whether you know, they are using and the skin stretches such as what we talked about. Okay. Modif uh, combination of the skin stretches and uh, 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 you know, solenoid motions can give you uh, yeah, much impressive uh, feedback of uh, uh, this um, recoil. There is another device again this is also very successful virtual reality reactive grip from a company called uh, tactile haptics. So, uh, this is a uh, uh, yeah, virtual reality uh, handle you hold it again here when you uh, when you hold it under the finger you have your skin stretching actuators you can see that this little actually it moves up and down here also it moves up and down there are actually uh, four such four eight actually you, this is the front side this is the side this is another side and the similar one at the back side so four here and four down combination of these things can give you the feeling of uh, movement. So, these are all simple uh, skin stretches, this is a very nice uh, uh, product from reactive grip. Okay. This is another uh, again and successful uh, startup, it is called tactile VR mask. Okay. You put on this uh, HMD onto your face, uh, there are actuators over here. there are actuators over here can you see the actuators this actuators will give you a feeling of blowing onto the onto the face suppose if somebody uh, something strikes on the face then they want to give a you know, feeling of uh, blowing onto the face very simple actuators again these are all without the kinesthetic movements just with the uh, cutaneous how do we uh, j uh, generate illusions is, uh, is what the challenge is. Okay. Recently, there is one an, uh, uh, research work, this is not a product yet, but this is in the research work which I thought it is a very nice uh, uh, product, probably it will be a product from the University of Tokyo uh, led by one of the professors in uh, the university. There, haptics shape illusions since in, uh, in the last class we all talked about the the illusions uh, i hope you remember the the shape and size illusions right yeah small shape looks heavier or uh, 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 compared to the you know, larger shape of the same weight right similar things can be talked about at uh, how shape can be modified just by you know uh, rearranging certain things for example he is talking about um, uh, something called a uh, haptic perception model. Okay. So, uh, in a x axis let us say mass is plotted, y axis let us say shape is plotted, then they come up with a relation saying that some relation. So, as you increase the uh, mass the shape also is actually increases or the there is a you know, perception between the, the mass of the, the object what you hold and the shape of the object that is what the size and uh, uh, weight illusions we talked about. The same thing is what is implemented over here. In this bat the size is same, but by adding weight into the holes you are actually changing the, uh, the weight of its in the virtual reality when you put on the HMD the mass because by changing the mass you are changing the shape of the object what you hold in the virtual reality okay. that is a haptic shape illusion. This is a very nice uh, uh, project which I, I thought may be of interest to a lot of people. Okay. 